Last night I cooked up a little CBD break-in Zach Greer type vibe and thought it'd be a cool way to show y'all how to make this kind of music. Here's a little preview of the track. Using my to find me, hold it. First I want to talk about the guitars. There are a lot of different ways to do this. I personally played the guitar on this one, but if you don't play guitar, you could always use a plug-in like Electric Sunburst by Contact, or you could just go on Looperman, Waves, or Splice and download some loops. There's no shame in that at all because you can always chop them up, pitch them, you know, really make them your own. Here's the kind of guitar that I started with on this track. We got a little left and right going. This is something that I think Zach and them do a lot of these kind of like filtered guitars for maybe an intro or a certain part of the song. And a way that I like to do that is using this speaker plugin. You can have a lot of different speakers, like it's coming out of a radio or if it's coming out of a telephone dialer, like all sorts of crazy shit in here. Now, if you don't have access to that plugin, I would just take an EQ, take out some of the lows, take out some of the highs, kind of leave this like one to three K kind of area. Maybe add a little saturation and OTT. When you add saturation and OTT, make sure to do it before the EQ as well. Otherwise, you'll get all that low end brought back in, which is not what you want if you want this kind of filtery effect. So that's the effect I used for the beginning of the song. But when it comes to the hook, I automated that off. So it gave me more of a full sound. And here's what that sounds like. And see, so I wanted it to kind of sound dirty. And so got a little bit of OTT. This is Slate Digital MOTT. Would highly recommend all the Slate stuff. And then I use this black box analog kind of saturator plugin. Also not necessary. If you're in FL Studio, you could use like Soundgoodizer, the Overdrive, just little distortion. You know, maybe turn the mix down to like 10% or something and you'll get that sound. And see, something else I also have going is this shaper box. And this is just making it, kind of giving it that pumping kind of feeling because this is a four on the floor type beat. And what that means is like the kind of EDME, like, you know, something like that. And so to get that pumping effect, put this on there. Some other ways you can do that, are like this plugin kickstart, or you could just go in with a utility plugin. So you could just create you a nice little curve, you know, shape it however you want. And then you could just copy and paste it on every bar. It'll give you the same effect. For the processing of the guitar, it's just got guitar rig on this tremolo twin setting. A couple other options are like the GTR type stuff, the neuro DSP type plugins, or if you're in Ableton, you can just use the stock amp. As long as you're getting a pretty clean sound, but just with a little bit of grit, you're in the right place. Next, I'm going to talk about the bass. I don't know exactly how Breakin did it in CBD. If I were to assume, he probably played the bass himself, but since I don't have a bass, I had to compensate using Trillion. And I ended up using the fingered retro 60s vintage on this one. It just gives me that really nice kind of like indie altish type tone that works really well for this stuff. And this is what it sounds like. All right, and for the processing, we got this little CLA bass, just kind of beefing it up a little bit. And then we got that same shaper box, just making it kind of pump with the kick. One thing that break into all these kind of hyper popper type dudes do is layer their vocals. And here's some good starting points for layering your vocals. At the very least, I would almost always for hook type parts have a main lead type vocal, two dubs panned left and right, just of the same melody. Then I would have two more doubles panned all the way left and all the way right of either a falsetto tone, which is like that ushery, like uh, kind of thing, or a really low tone. It just kind of depends on what key. Break in, he uses his falsetto voice a lot. And so I wanted to do that on this one. And here's what those sound like together. So the way I'm processing the vocals is just got a little bit of auto tune on there. Alto tenor, A flat major, the key of the song. Pretty fast retune speed, a little bit of humanized. CLA vocals, got the black box, just doing a little bit of saturation. Any saturator will do. Little DSing with the Fat Filter Pro, and then just a little EQ, rolling off some of the highs and some of the lows. So we got those, and then we got the two doubles, just kind of echoing what's going on with the lead vocal. And for those, we just got auto tune and CLA vocals on there. Then we got the lead vocal 
vocal, which is processed pretty much the same as the falsettos. As far as reverb and delay, we got just a splash of reverb, you know, Valhalla vintage verb, but these vocals tend to be pretty dry usually. And so as far as the delay goes, I just wanted certain words and phrases to have delay. And so I automated it on the words and phrases that I wanted and ended up using just the stock Ableton echo delay, but any delay works. But that secret sauce for your delays is to never make your delays dry. There should always be like either some reverb, some saturation, some EQ, you know, something going on with your delays just to help them be more unique and kind of gel better with the mix. And here's what all those layers sound like together. People using my debts to define me, hold it over my head. Something to also try out on these kind of vocals is OTT, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a crispy kind of sound. This is what that sounds like. People using my debts to define me, hold it over my head. Another quick tip for vocals in general is to go through and to make sure all of your audio is cleaned up. What that means is just going through and cutting out all the blank space in between your vocal takes. Also making sure all of your vocals are lined up. Now these kind of things I know are really time consuming and annoying, but if you do them, it's really gonna help take your vocal to the next level. Next, we got the drums. Quick side note, if you're looking for some drums, I just released an entire custom kit for free. A lot of these sounds are inspired by people like Brickens and Zach Greer. So if you're interested, go check that out. But in this specific song, we got just kind of a basic little groove going on. Here's what the drums sound like. Pretty simple, kind of similar to like the CVD kind of break and vibe. For the snares in this song, it's really just about sound selection and layering. So we got three separate layers and here's what those sound like. The first one's this 90s snare, just really adding a lot of oomph and low end to the snare. Second one's a more kind of roomy, shitty acoustic sounding snare. And the last one's just adding that pop and kind of top end. And so together they sound like this. And then we got this Cody kick. Shout out to Cody for being a goat, always dropping dope stuff. And then for the hat, we got this little reality hi-hat. The real key on these to making them somewhere realistic is to automate or change the velocity. Because a real drummer is not going to be like, tss, 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 tss. he's going to be like, tss, 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 tss. you know, he's going to really fill the pocket. And so that's what you want on these kind of beats. Then just to add a little spice, got some fills going few times and that's how you do it. And the last thing that's just really adding that oomph to this beat are the effects and transitional sounds. This is something that a lot of people massively overlook but can really help elevate your track. So to go into the hook, we got this little sweep, which is actually from this Nick Mira Touch Volume 2 kit. And then right when it hits, usually you wanna add like a crash, an open hat, a sweep, a downlifter, any of these kind of things, just to add a little bit more punch to your hook. And so in this case, I layered two crashes and a sweep. And here's what they sound like individually and then together. What's giving the sweep that kind of pumping feeling is that same shaper box plug in from before. As far as mastering goes, usually you don't need to get that crazy. You can add just like a little clipper. I know the Fruity Clipper's dope. If you're an Ableton, you could use the glue compressor or the saturator. They both have a soft clip function that's just gonna help give your tracks that little extra punch. But in this case, I use the Maserati GRP master setting, adding some nice compression, just a little bit of top end. Then we got the Ozone Imager going on. And what I was looking to do with this particular plugin is really just open up the kind of high mid range and just take it out of the center and just fill out the whole frequency spectrum. Then basic vintage limiter, boosting it, maybe like a half a dB or something more. And after all that, this is what the hook sounds like. People using my dance to define me, hold it over my head to remind me all the things that I said to you blindly. I don't want to defend the person you think I am. Woo! Well, that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you have any questions about things that I did, make sure to let me know in the comments or hit me up on Instagram. Regardless of anything though, keep vibing, making dope music, and I'll see you next time. Love you.